What's up everybody, Zach is back with another episode of Journey to One Million Dollars and today is one of those days where we are getting closer to our goal, thank god. Maybe the tech winner is, o uh, is over, maybe it's not, maybe it's a bull trap, but we're going to investigate in this episode. So, you know what time it is, go ahead and pull up on your computers or your mobile devices, prostockadvice.com slash blog, the new write-up is available march the 15th what a lovely day it is to be alive and investing in tech and semiconductors um today actually my portfolio is up 3.66 percent which is not amazing but it is great and it feels good it's around 22,000. nothing special actually my options we're up about 2200 which is good. We saw the recovery in ARCs, no matter ARC, K, G, W, just all the ABC ARCs. Um, so it's, it felt good in around 20000 in the uh, common common long-term buy and holds. Soxel led the way, the Tackle, the T, Triple Q, all of those juicy and tasty 3X leveraged ETFs, which I love. I love dearly, actually. But uh, nevertheless, if you, I always get asked almost every single post that I make on Reddit or Twitter. Everybody asks, what did you start with? Um, how long did it take? And uh, even though I feel like I cover that so much, maybe I should make a specific video on it. But uh, I started with, uh, in 2011, with negative 500. Yes, that is right. Someone that believed in me let me borrow some money. They gave me an advance. And uh, by 2020, I was my stock account was up to 330. So we made some progress. It's almost 100%. It's actually, it's literally 99.63%. <laughs> and that's since 2020, so it's okay. I usually play it pretty conservative. I'm not YOLOing. I'm not doing any of those crazy things. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, it is what it is. It's not bad. I'm also not going all in an arc, even though I guess I should have <laughs> last year, but... But nevertheless, that, that's that's what I'm doing. So, and then also I, if you were watching the live stream from earlier, you will know that I did buy a put on Ebong and also uh, buy a call on, bought a call on Iron Mountain, which both of those ended up not getting filled. I was trying to be a cheapo on it, try to get a good deal, but yeah, didn't work out. So we'll try again tomorrow. I like both of these and that's what we will cover in the report. Also, this GameStop one, if you're wondering, I was trying to close that out before, because GameStop, it was a put that I had uh, from the, which meme stock of the week should we put $100 on? Which, by the way, you guys can actually vote on that. So it's pretty cool. It's fun. We're having a good time on the live stream. So guys, go ahead and turn on those notifications and join the Discord and I will ping you once we're starting a live stream. I still get some people say that, you know, Zach, when is the live stream? I keep missing it. Well, you can always go back on my YouTube channel and check that out. So go ahead and while you're down in the, those comment sections and checking out those links, smash that like button. It really does help me out. But anyways, let's just cut to the chase and talk about what everybody is probably here to talk about, which is e -bunk. Now, this one is actually up a lot in the past week. More than 100%, I do believe, so that's pretty crazy. I actually want to get a put on this because I have, I have personal experience with this company, and I can tell you this company just, just really sucks. I visited the factory in Shanghai, so it, it was it was really surprised me how um, how dirty it, can, it was for producing computer components, parts, and I mean specifically they make the ASIC, the ASIC crypto. Well, the ASICs are the Bitcoin miners. Um, so I mean. And it just surprised me how dusty and dirty it was. Really not nice. So that's just something to keep in mind. But also I had bought a bunch of these, um, a bunch of their hardware back in 2016, 2017. Like literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. I don't remember exactly because we always wanted the Bitmain S9s at that point. Uh, or even the InnoSilicons, which are not as good as the Bitmain ones. Um, but the worst one is easily can say is, is the E-Bongs. I think they had the E-9s at that point, if I remember correctly. But nevertheless, we had a bunch of those. And I can tell you from my experience, they always broke 
down and gosh, they just had so many problems and they were so complicated to get online. Well, much more complicated than the S9s and whatnot. So, yeah, not to mention the hashing power is not as good. The resale value just sucks because nobody wants them. Because uh, I think people overall know that they suck. And they break down. But just keep in mind, like, the holy grail of mining ASIC miners would be Bitmain. And then if those are all sold out or they're way on back order and you're not going to be able to get them, then it's going to be the InnoSilicons. People would, oh, okay, well, there's no S9s available, no Bitmain ones. Well, Bitcoin's so high right now and they're making so much money, so let me just go ahead and buy the InnoSilicon ones. And then usually after that, if the InnoSilicon ones are sold out, then people start to consider the E-Bong. Um, just overall, just not good. So, I'm actually surprised. So, uh, one of my followers brought it to my attention on the live stream. And they asked me my opinion, which I really appreciate that because I have a lot to say about this company. So, um, you know, nevertheless, check this out. Just in the last couple of days, it's been going off. But see, that's the thing is all of the crypto stocks, Mara, Riot, blah, blah, blah. All of these stocks are going up. So it can be interesting, you would think. But I just don't know. I cannot see myself buying this at all. I would never touch it because I know. Um, I really think the standards for what can what Chinese companies can trade on the New York Stock Exchange is just really wacko, in my opinion. But, you know, they're, they're, they got some numbers to show because Bitcoin is high and they're, currently their machines are making money and they're selling them for just crazy markups, I imagine. Um, so I get it. I get it. But... If there is a slight ripple in the water to shake things up in the crypto world, Bitcoin world specifically, this one I'm sure would just will get shot. Just drive-by shooting on the e-bong machines. But I mean, they will be almost worthless. Just because I remember back in 2017 when it, uh, Bitcoin crashed, these weren't worth anything. All these, all the hardware from e-bong weren't worth anything. Nobody wanted them because people would sell the bitmain ones first and people could buy the bitmain ones for s9s or whatnot really cheap so once things do uh take a turn for the south in the crypto world which it inevitably inevitably will just keep that in mind not always going to go up but hey don't get me wrong I've, i'm holding crypto right now and it's a lot of fun and i've been in crypto since 2011 nevertheless so i'm not bearish on it by any means all i'm saying that eventually it will cool off and pull back it's not a bad thing. And I just think that these will be the first to go. Ebong will be the first one to get shot. Um, they are on the front lines in the trenches and barely surviving, I imagine, anyways. Um, so, nevertheless, that's my thoughts. I mean, maybe you guys have different opinions on it, which is cool. Uh, let me know what you guys think on this one in the comments. I am very interested. I have personal experience. This is actually a picture of one of the mining farms that in China that we had up and running. At least we had some of some of the machines there. Um, well, I tried to find some pictures of the Ebong factor, but I couldn't. It was such a long time ago I went to see, so maybe they improved a lot. You know what I mean? But um, from my experience, this will be the first one thrown under the bus if uh, things don't go very well in the Bitcoin world. So just keep that in mind. It's just my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but so I'm actually, I'm in, actually interested in buying a put on this, and I tried earlier, but it didn't get filled, which is fine. We'll try again and see what's going on. But uh, I expect it to pull back to the 50-day. Uh, I, I just don't see why it wouldn't pull back to the 50-day. This is that's this is ridiculous of a company, uh, in my opinion. Uh, very, very, very subpar. Very mediocre. Just bleh. But can't wait till Coinbase goes public with that said. <laughs> and Bitmain, if they ever do. Anyways, I put this as a risk of a 5 because just because crypto is so hot and just everything is going up because Bitcoin is going up, so you never know. Um, but I think it's worth the risk. These puts are not expensive, especially it's just shot up so much, so it's pretty cheap and you never know. I guess that's kind of how I feel about GameStop. Those GameStop puts. But nevertheless, let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, the next two, actually I have two ETFs. They're electric vehicle ETFs. Uh, well, electric vehicle slash autonomous driving. It would be DRIV and IDRV. 
Um, so, yeah, so in my opinion, electric vehicles are the future. I'm not bearish on this in the slightest. Uh, I think everything is on sale right now. And actually, instead of getting a, a Tesla or set, instead of buying a Lee or instead of buying a Neo or a Workhorse or whatever, or even a, a, a Ride, the Lordstown, which got just slaughtered on that short seller report, but it's all good. But see, that's the thing is get an ETF. ETFs are underrated. I mean, they got ETFs for everything these days. So if we can just get exposure to like everything in the sector, even autonomous driving and the electric vehicles, could be interesting. If you agree with me and you think this is the future, let me know what you guys think about that. I love those conversations. But um, you go, you guys probably know what my thoughts are on that. And just from living in China and seeing the EV revolution. Um, and how it's changed just by eyeball. I always like to say just by eyeballing it on the streets in, in Shanghai, I think probably 20 to 30% of the cars are electric. At least they have the green license plates, which means they are electric. No matter if they're plug-in hybrids or fully electric, there's huge momentum uh, pushing towards electrifying pretty much everything. And also in Germany, as you can see, that uh, by 2030, they mandate all the... Uh, new vehicles should be electric. So that's a long time, and probably Volkswagen will do very well with that, the conglomerate. But um, yeah, so far, in my opinion, that Volkswagen has a long way to go. But nevertheless, so I think, you know, oh, and by the way, the X, the Xiaopeng, I'm actually going to go test drive one of those this week, hopefully. So if I have enough time, so subscribe, hit the like, and I'm going to go do that. If I get enough likes on this video, I will go do that. But but anyway, so I think that this is the future, and if I have such a big EV position already that I don't really want any more, to be honest with you, because it would just just doesn't make sense for my portfolio, the balancing and, and whatnot. Um, but I could see myself eventually reducing my Tesla position, uh, possibly some reducing some Arc, uh, Arc K that is, because it's just so heavy in Tesla. Even Arc W now is, isn't it? And but nevertheless, and then shifting that over more towards an iDrive or a Drive. It could be interesting. Uh, I just think that there's so much room to grow in the North American market here. Um, the biggest world's biggest market is China, obviously, for EVs. And then second would be Europe, which hopefully NEO does make it there. Uh, but then, anyway, so we could talk about electric vehicles just literally all day. I could talk about it. But um, if you look at the charts, both of these are about the same. And they've done rather well during this tip. They're not down as anywhere close to as much as just holding a Tesla or holding a Xiaopeng or holding a Li. Um, or ride, but uh, anyways, and these have already pushed back above the 50-day, so it's pretty interesting throwing in your uh, electric vehicles in with autonomous driving one and making an ETF. I think this is overall just awesome, so I'm very interested in it. But again, I probably won't make any, make any moves on that. However, if it's my first time to put money into this sector, then I would actually load up on these. And then the last but not least is Iron Mountain. Iron Mountain, maybe a lot of you guys don't know about this REIT, so I'll just read what I took from the Yahoo Finance. Uh, Iron Mountain Incorporated was founded in 1951, which was a long time ago, and it is a global leader for storage and information management services. Iron Mountain stores and protects billions of valued assets, including critical business information, highly sensitive data, and cultural and historical artifacts. Um, providing solutions that include secure record storage, information management, di digital transformation, secure destruction, as well as data centers, cloud services, and art storage and logistics. So uh, the point where I, I like this one personally, I've been looking into it, but the reason why I like this one is because it's shifting towards cloud storage, information, uh, data, um, data centers, and whatnot. Uh, but it, it is an REIT. So this is pretty interesting because I'm very bullish on data centers, especially the real estate surrounding them or the real estate like uh, the different 5G towers, like those REITs are actually doing pretty good. Uh, but nevertheless, this one is, is looking pretty interesting and it's been growing a lot since they've been transitioning more towards the cloud and data center. Um, this is a long company with a very good dividend too, a 6.6% .6 dividend yield actually. So this could be an excellent long-term Hold, but let me just go ahead and show you guys the uh, long-term chart. So it could be a good long-term hold. It's not going down, I can tell you. But if we go over to the week chart here, um, yeah, if you notice what I'm seeing, it's trading kind of right here. 
for the light at least since 2015 it's 2013 actually 2013 is up down up down up down it's just swinging up and down a lot actually um, so there's a lot of long-term swing plays we could do in it not to mention we can get collect the six percent while we're holding it um, so I think this could be interesting but you know even if you just want to hold it long term it's a really interesting REIT um, it's gone up a lot since it's uh, IPO in 1996 um, so I personally like this one. If we go look in a little bit closer on the day chart, it's been moving up since uh, November. So I think it, I, I set targets around 38 to $40. That would be interesting. Uh, some call options around, uh, I think, a one month till expiration, around 37 and a half. You could do $40 strike. You could also do the 37.5 slash $45 vertical spread. Could be interesting. Um, but it does, definitely seems like it's moving up. Yeah. Also has good dividends, and I personally like REITs. I don't think they're they're overall that risky. And this one is just going to be, it's just really positioning itself to um, be a, a leader because it's already such a big company uh, with a long history and a good dividend. This is really setting itself up to um, be a leader in the uh, our future of cloud storage, data data uh, protecting the sensitive data and whatnot. So it could be interesting. But anyways, price target $40 entry. Get it right now. Just start dollar cost averaging into some uh, call options or just common shares. Also could be interesting. I put it at a risk of four. Now, usually I would put this at a, a much lower risk, probably a two or three for a long-term play. Um, just holding common shares or leaps or whatnot. But since this is a short time uh, frame for me, I want to get in and out. Uh, try to do a one-month to expiration, $40 strike, something like that. So, uh, so just because of the time frame is short, I went ahead and put it at a risk of four because you never know bad things can happen. But anyways, guys, I do appreciate you guys tuning in. And keep in mind, the uh, risk is on a scale of one to five. The one is the least risky. Feel more, I feel more comfortable putting more money into them. And then the higher the risk is, closer towards five or even five plus, some of them are, uh, the less money I would allocate towards those positions because they are less risky. And that's just how I do it. I play it pretty conservative. And hopefully you guys are following along. If you're making gains from my picks, go ahead and send me the screenshots. I will put them in the Discord. Uh, wall of fame if you're making any if you're making some money let me know this always feels good to make money but anyways guys i appreciate you guys go ahead and smash that like button one more time just like smash it maybe like 10 times just keep just keep smashing it um and also if you find this video informative and helpful just go ahead and share it around let, let some people know um i think the tech winter is over for the most part i think it might be a little bit choppy this week but um you know i see the light at the end of the tunnel so if you were if you stuck with me during these uh, hard last three weeks ish and dollar cost averaging. I mean, it's really going to pay off soon. So, um, nevertheless, let's, let's go ahead and meet up on the discord, meet up on Twitter and see what time of the day it is. Anyways, guys, I will see you on the other side. Peace.